Welcome to Moon Harbor Heroes. Today's issue is Cataclysm Crew, issue one. Let's go to the movies. On the cover, there's a close-up of Squire, our heroic raccoon, wearing 3D glasses. She faces a movie screen, which is reflected in the lenses, and happily eats popcorn. On one lens, Machina, Rascal King, and Ethereal flee from a giant clown, a pterodactyl, and an alien who chase them from the other lens. We turn the page, and our story begins. We are at a movie theater. It is probably about 7.30 at night. Probably on a weekday, too. It's on a weekend. Whose master idea was it to go to the movies tonight? Um, we'll go with Amber. I feel like I feel like she would try to get us to be social outside, fighting. That makes sense. That, that tracks with me. Astro, what did you think about getting dragged to the movies? What are your thoughts about it? Damn it. I'll go if you keep, as long as you don't friggin' keep on pestering me. I got shit to do. Awesome. Uh, Amber, what movie are you dragging them to see? She's gonna be ironic and take them to whichever superhero movie is current. All right, oh, so we're seeing the latest superhero movie. Uh, what is the superhero? Like, who is in the movie? I've got a name for a group. Hit me up with a group name. Crisis Oracles. Sounds like our group. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. All right, what else is playing this week at the movies? There's kind of a, a horror that just came out. I imagine there's a rerun of, like, Home Alone or some sort of stuff going on. There's, like, a, a, a more family comedy that's been out for a few weeks. And I guess this, oh. the, the superhero movie has been out for maybe, like, a week or so. So it's not, like, as crowded, but still a bit busy. Cool. So we've got, like, a Home Alone, a classic, like, family feel-good movie, uh, family comedy. I feel like the family comedy is probably like a sequel. Like we're, we're like three movies deep into this franchise. It's probably not great yeah. anymore, but we're still doing it. We've got the Crisis Oracles. There's also a horror movie and there's a um, rom-com kind of movie, like a, prin- uh, like a Disney princess kind of movie. What's the horror movie? I Will Eat Your Face. <laughs> like in that movie Face Off? Yeah. I would like to also propose that the rom-com is called I Will Kiss Your Face. <laughs> Fantastic. It's actually the same movie, just shot two different ways. Um, I like, like it. Edited I very like differently. It. Nice. Cool. So we've got I Will Kiss Your Face. I Will Eat Your Face. Uh, we've got The Crisis Oracles. We've got Home Alone. Great. That seems like a good su- supply of movies for the day. Uh, for the Home Alone, we can call it Young and Forgotten. <laughs> that seems true, too. Young and Forgotten is absolutely on there. The family comedy... The family comedy is Mama's Basement 3. It's like one of those comedies where the jokes are a little bit too adult for kids, but they're going to laugh anyway. Oddly enough, the working title for both I Will Kiss Your Face and I Will Eat Your Face. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then uh, also there's an adventure movie that's not the superhero movie. We're going like a like an action kind of. So I'm thinking Homeward Bound or something like that. I was thinking like Indiana Jones type. But not like that classic. More just like Michael Bay. Yeah, I was going to say because in this world uh, that's going to seem kind of mundane. That's I think fair. this world's uh, Indiana Jones could be Barnaby Smith. <laughs> Barnaby Smith. All right, um, Barnaby Smith and the Kingdom of what? Face eaters. A uh, face eaters. <laughs> Keep a running theme going. Yeah, I mean, Excellent. they they only eat the face. They don't. The rest of it is just too high calorie for them. I would like to posit that the theater we're in is called uh, "Like in That Movie Theater." <laughs> so we are at "Like in That Movie Theater," and we've got a uh, there's there's six movies showing. It's not a small theater, but it's not huge either. We are in Moon Harbor South, which is the the less nice side of town. It's where Moon Harbor High is, where uh, both Max and Amber go. We are. Sitting down, uh, we are seeing Crisis Oracles. It's the first movie of that franchise. So it's like Avengers 1. In the theaters on either side of you, we've got Barnaby Smith and the Kingdom of Face Eaters and I Will Eat Your Face are on either side. The movie is about to start. probably got about five minutes. Who has what? Like who brought what food in? Oh, Rascal King absolutely snuck in a illogical amount of snacks. Amber has like a box of lemon heads shoved into a bra. Bag of warheads. Fantastic. All right. And I assume that Squire 
Did Squire, do we buy a ticket for Squire or is Squire like sitting on your lap? I think we get like three panels of Squire like sneaking in through a vent. <laughs> and I'm like dropping out of the ceiling on the, onto the chair beside me. I'm kind of sad that Squire didn't bring us own snacks. And like the last panel is like Squire dropping down and me like uh, handing her a box of what are those called? Snow cones? Absolutely. You gave her the lame ones? Jeez. All right, so the movie's about to start. It's pretty crowded in the movie theater today. Like we said, it's the second week. People are giving some kind of like side eye to Squire. Um, No one really reacted that Squire fell out of the ceiling, but now that Squire has a seat, people are kind of like judging a little bit. What do we do, folks? Squire could sit on my lap. I like Squire. Max is is likely the person who talks a little bit too much. He's just a little bit too excited for this whole thing to begin. He's probably spouting like various trivia. Amber is probably going to try to take a selfie with the group. All right. So, uh, Max, why don't you start telling us some of the trivia about the Crisis Oracles? Most of what he says is probably very, very suspect. Like, wild claims about animals helping with the production of various parts of the sets <laughs> and such. Without about two minutes, uh, I assume, Amber, you've taken your selfie? Yeah, I have no idea how the others reacted, but she at least looks nice. Uh, Max would probably, like, lean in and smile for it, and Squire pops in at the last second, like, throws up, like, devil horns. <laughs> uh, I kind of just slouched back in my sl- uh, seat and rolled my eyes. I imagine the selfie catches right as the eyes are rolled, so we get, like, full, like, over it full attitude. Sass. Yes. In the, like, forever documented picture. <laughs> yep. I'm into it. All right, as we're talking, as you guys are chatting, and Max is spouting off kind of random information, that's likely not true. And Squire once in a while will shake her head and be like, that's not true. You can tell that Squire's like, this is so much bullshit. A usher comes through and is like shining a light. The light like makes direct contact with Squire, who like looks up, looks at the usher. The usher just looks down the aisle, stares at Squire for a second, shrugs, and then walks out the door. Sounds about right. Excellent. And then the movie starts. The movie's pretty loud. It's a, it's a pretty action-y movie. Nothing really happens. For, I mean, like, the movie happens, but, like, it's just a pretty standard superhero movie. We get a slight origin story, and the group's all together, and they're fighting this, like, interdimensional threat that's threatening to rip the world apart. You've seen it a million times. You know, you're heroes. You understand this. And from the next theater over, the theater where um, I Will Eat Your Face is, there's some really loud screaming. Something really scary just happened in that movie. I kind of want to go see. <laughs> How far into the movie are we? You're about 45 minutes to an hour in. Like, okay. you're, you're probably far enough in that we've met all the characters and we've, like, started working on a plan to take care of the thing, but the first plan has yet to fail. Rascal King is probably pretty enraptured at this point and maybe to the point, like, actually taking some notes in a notepad. <laughs> <laughs> Makina is definitely very distracted by two of the mm. actors who are very attractive. Which two? Which two actors are we talking about? One's male, one's female. She's very torn. Excellent. Are they playing romantic, like a, a love, uh, like a couple? No, they're just both really hot. Great. And Ethereal, you said you wanted to maybe go check out. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to slip out the you, back. You... They're distracted. They don't notice. I'm completely bored with this movie anyway. I'm going to go check out what happened in that room because. If I, I want to see what they're screaming about, I'll probably make a comment if I find it lame. That, oh, uh, yeah, back on set, it's like back in Sector 42, we had stuff like that that would friggin' do so much worse. You're leaving the theater, and as you go over, you realize that the screaming actually came from Barnaby Smith and the Kingdom of Face Eaters. Which isn't supposed to be a horror movie. I mean, maybe there's a scary part in it, but that was a lot of screaming. It probably got to the part where they got to the Kingdom of Face Eaters. I was going to say, maybe the friggin' reviews bombed. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Ethereal, as you walk in, you notice that everyone is wearing uh, 3D glasses. This is a 3D movie, which, as you know from your planet, all movies are in 3D. So oh, that, that's probably so just a little ridiculous. Quality. Oh, so this is low-quality, primitive 3D. Gotcha. Yeah, it's, it's, you're probably judging pretty hard. Even without glasses on, because you don't currently have glasses on, The movie looks very, very real, like coming off the screen, very real. Barnaby Smith is in a jungle at this point, but it actually looks like the vines are like growing out of the screen. Like it's kind of impressive. There's a uh, prehistoric creature of some sort, pterodactyl-like animal, but imagine a pterodactyl with like thousands of teeth and claws. And it 
swoops through the trees almost to the point where it looks like it's actually in the theater. And then you realize that the screaming is because the, the pterodactyl is actually in the theater. It seems like the movie has come to life and they're not screaming at the plot of the film, but rather that the pterodactyl is attacking. What do you do? Is it eating faces? We haven't got to that part yet. We're, we're still in the, like, they're like only like 25 minutes in. Okay. I mean, I could wait five minutes to see what happens. But... <laughs> <laughs> it does uh, seem like the movie has stopped. It seems like the character of Barnaby Smith is frozen on screen as the uh, pterodactyl terrorizes the audience. Right. In the uh, panel, it says that it's terrifying. There's a P in front of it. Oh, fantastic. Natural. All right, after all, what do you do? I think the first thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to issue a pheromone that kind of puts everyone in the room into a state of ecstasy. Because <laughs> they're screaming. <laughs> they're screaming is getting on my nerves. And I can't have them in a panic. Great. Uh, let's call that an unleash your powers. Go ahead and unleash your powers for me. You're going to roll plus freak. I got a 10. Fantastic. All right, so uh, what does that panel look like when you unleash that pheromone? There's fog rolling off my body, and it rolls across every everything in the room. And anything that's breathing it in is now in a state of just absolute. They're just oozing on the floor, rubbing their bodies and stuff. They're 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 happy, and they're completely unaware of everything around them. All right. So when you unleash the powers, it also kind of affected the pterodactyl who's cool. kind of like landed on the projection screen. So now you can only see half of the movie. Like it's blocked, the rest of it's blocked by the body of this like dopely grinning pterodactyl creature. As you watch the movie uh, starts moving again, we see the face eaters come to screen for the first time. At first we only see the shadows of them along the trees. And then the face eaters, which look kind of like chimpanzees, but if chimpanzees had four sets of arms, they start climbing out of the screen using the vines that have now growing. And they are <laughs> readily preparing to launch at the audience that is so oblivious because they are now like paralyzed with ecstasy. You give me a second here. Great, well, while you're thinking, we're gonna shift back to Max and uh, uh, Amber. Max and Amber, the movie that you're watching is also getting pretty intense. In the like three minutes since Ethereal left, a love interest of our main hero, of a uh, mega dude, uh, his uh, boyfriend was just killed pretty viciously oh, no. by our supervillain. And he's kind of like screaming and sobbing. And he has laser vision. And as he's screaming, he'll like occasionally look up and just like throw his head around, kind of wailing. And he's shooting lasers all over the place. It does kind of look like the lasers are coming out of the screen. Uh, and there's almost like dust falling from the ceiling as it's like ripping through the ceiling. It's really, really good special effects. Max turns to Amber. These are really good special effects. Yeah, they're really cool. Squire's the first one to really notice anything. Squire, like, sneezes as some dust lands on her nose. And then she starts rapidly patting both of your thighs. Thank God there's one spark creature in that room. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to kind of jump up and uh, look around the room. Can I go ahead and assess the situation here? Assess away. I got a seven. Great. Uh, on a seven to nine, ask one. What here is in the greatest danger? Directly underneath where the lasers are just cut, ac cut across the ceiling, there's a group of probably about nine or ten, probably like seven or eight-year-olds. It looks like they're here on a birthday party. They're enraptured in the film. They don't even realize what's happening. And it looks like the ceiling could probably cave in on them at any moment. So, Max, uh, uh, what do you do? I'm going to uh, point up at the ceiling. Like, Amber, I think that's about to fall. And then dive forward towards the kids. Squire hot at my heels. Are you going through the aisles, or are you climbing over people? Yeah, I think I'm absolutely climbing over people. Fantastic. There's a woman in front of you who's like, excuse the fuck out of me. She says it really, really loudly, and people are shushing her as you climb over this crowd. Uh, but yeah, you make it to the kid. I like, I like that right after that panel, we get Squire climbing over her unceremoniously. <laughs> and I grab like Squire off the top of her head, toss her on my shoulder, and keep on climbing. Probably takes her fake wig, wig with her. <laughs> I just imagine this stupidly tall wig that's just obnoxious with the people like that. I don't know why. <coughs> no, she's got the, she's got the, uh, uh, I want to speak to your manager haircut. She's definitely at least got extensions. It may not be a full wig, but like 
as Squire comes off, some extension, some hair comes with, and she doesn't seem to be in pain about it. All right, uh, Max, you're at the kids now. What do you do? Is there an adult present, or do these yeah. kids seem unsupervised? No, there's at least one adult. Uh, there's two adults, actually, but one of them is snoring. The mother is... Uh, okay. I'm going to... Out, and there's a father there as well, who's pretty enraptured. I'm going to, like, hop down in front of them, probably over top of them, to land in the aisle in front of them. Like... Oh, uh, you have to move. The ceiling's about to cave in and point upwards. Great. Uh, that seems like you're provoking someone. Why don't you go ahead and roll? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Squire should roll for you. All right. They look at you and they're like, haha, very funny. This is part of the movie. You think this is part of the movie? The, mo- uh, the dad, like, sh- pushes you out of the way. The mom keeps snoring. And Machina, it's your turn. Or Amber, you're not in costume. Amber, uh, what, is, what are you going to do? So after after Max notifies her that it looks like the ceiling's going to cave in, she uses her powers to bring the lights back up. So that way the ceiling falling in is a lot more visible. And it, it like can also kind of shock people into looking around and getting out of I can't take uh, you guys anywhere. Movie. Everyone no- now notices that the lights are up or that the ceiling is about to fall in. The kids notice before the parents do and the kids immediately start scrambling out of the way. The dad is still pretty enraptured in the movie until he starts hearing something crack, and then he too dives out of the way. The ceiling falls and lands right next to the mom, but the mom is fine. Doesn't even wake her. Is she's she still, still snoring. Yep, she's still <laughs> snoring. That's my kind of woman. <laughs> There's a cloud of dust that comes up from that, and you look. Uh, what is the super villain or like the the threat they're fighting in Crisis Oracles? How about how about a Scarlet Scorpion? Ooh, I like that. All right, so Scarlet Scorpion, she's a super villain. She's uh, probably about six foot tall. Nice. Um, wears, a, wears a red, very tight skin suit, and she has a tail that is lightning fast. Her tail zips out past the movie screen, and then her hand reaches out around the outside of the movie screen, and she pulls herself forward. And she speaks in this very slow, methodical, very in power voice, and she says, well, well, well. What have we here? Uh, and now we're going to go into um, a fight as a team against a foe. Ooh. So uh, let's look at the team section there. Uh, we're going to start with two team. Who's the leader of this right now? Uh, Rascal probably wouldn't think of himself as the leader, but would definitely like try and take on that role if he needed to. So he's, I'm cool with him being the leader in this one. I feel like he's also like physically closer to the screen by now. Yeah, <laughs> probably a bit. That's true. If the leader has influence over every teammate, which right now is just Amber, uh, add another team. Yep. Great. So you're at three. Rascal King, what is your purpose in this fight? My purpose is to get the civilians out. Amber, what is your purpose in this fight? To stop the immediate threat. I'm going to say that's probably not the same. uh, Yeah, I don't think so. If any member mistrusts the team or the leader, remove a team. Uh, Amber, do you trust Max? Yeah. And Max, you trust Max? Yeah. And if you're ill-prepared or off-balance, remove a team. I think we might be. I mean, we don't even have our costumes. We weren't coming here to fight. Yeah. I'd agree with that. I'd say you're probably off-balance. I mean, you just climbed over like a lady and a man to get to the front row. (laughs) That does not necessarily mean I'm off-balance. I'm good at scrambling. That feels pretty in character for Max. All right, so you're at two team then. Amber, you're probably up to do something first. Uh, Max, the ceiling has just fallen in front of you, and you just got this group out of the way, so Amber's a little bit more free to jump in and do things. Amber, what are um, you doing? Like how, how much of the ceiling would you say has fallen in? Uh, yeah, it pretty much came in in the first row and the like little aisle in front of the first row. If it's like a tile ceiling, it's probably about two squares deep, about two-thirds of the way across. Okay. Is it just just the tiles that fell in, none of the infrastructure above? Yeah, it's the tiles and, like, the metal that holds the tiles up. The um, but there's no permanent damage to the ceiling. Okay. No beams are damaged. Okay. So I'm, I'm just try- trying to think of, like, the, uh, the electrical structure up there. All those wires are still intact. Okay. Cool. And so the Scarlet Scorpion has, like, just, just come out of the screen? Yep. She cool. looks hot. Yes, she does. <laughs> yeah, she does. Uh, while you're thinking about what you're doing, we're going to jump back to Ethril. Ethril, the uh, face eaters have now climbed out of the screen and are preparing to jump at the 
intoxicated yeah. audience. What are I'm, you doing? I'm, I'm going to use my density control to make the floor and the people on it intangible. I guess that means I'm, well, that's up to you, but to me, that sounds like a defense. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, defend that. So I got a six. So you uh, try to make things, the um, people on the floor, immaterial, and the floor definitely becomes immaterial. The people all fall um, okay. and kind of like slam. Their, their seats become immaterial more than the floor. They fall and kind of hit the floor pretty hard, jolting them out of the ecstasy for a moment, just as the face eaters slam into them. Oh, um, it, makes, it works out for me in the end anyway. Cool. Yeah, uh, the people can probably push the face eaters off. They're not very big. They're probably about three and a half feet tall. There's not enough of them to like hit everyone in the audience. There's probably only like six or seven of them. So most of the audience <coughs> are running out and kind of like pushing past you through the door to the point that you get knocked out into the hallway. As you get knocked out into the hallway, you hear uh, screaming and you hear kind of a crash coming from the movie you were just in, in the same kind of way that we had from the 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 manifestation of these creatures in your side. I just uh, want to point out, even when I fail, I'm still doing better than the other two. <laughs> <laughs> You're now in the hallway. The face eaters are in your room uh, in the one movie, and something has happened in the other. What do you want to do? I want to go watch <laughs> Mama's Basement 3. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Uh, Mama's Basement 3 is like six doors down if you want to walk down. <laughs> it's in the flow of the people, so you might get caught up and, like, pushed to the front door if you try to go through them. But, uh, you can maybe make it to the movie and make it inside. I mean, it sounds like a play. Everything else is going to shit. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of catch onto the door frame as you pass Mama's Basement 3. You get to pull yourself in. You walk in just as a big laugh moment happens and everyone's cracking up. Uh, there's a character who is covered in eggs. And you're not really sure why they're covered in eggs. But we don't get a chance to look at that because we're going to jump back over to Amber. Makes, Amber, what are we doing? It makes sense if you've seen the prequel. Is Scarlet Scorpion, like, still, like, still, like, in between the screen and the real world? Or has she, like, fully come out? Uh, she's, like, halfway in between. She's hanging by her tail and one hand. Cool. Um, mm. Almost like she's leaning on the side of the screen. Cool. I, Amber's going to run forward to send a surge of electricity through the screen to try to hurt her. All right. Can you go ahead and roll plus danger? Cool, nine. On a seven to nine, pick one. You can either resist or avoid their blows, take something from them, create an opportunity for your allies, or impress, surprise, or frighten the opposition. I'm gonna create an opportunity for my allies. Excellent. The electricity surges through the screen. The screen itself is not electric, but, um. It is like threaded with metal behind it. So there's like, there's metal piping to hold the screen in place and like keep it stretched. Oh yeah. So you, start, so you surge it through the metal piping, probably from the floor through like a wire that it's touching or something. And it does shock the Scarlet Scorpion who uh, lets go with her tail and kind of like falls and slumps. Uh, so now she's just holding on with her hand. She takes that and kind of rolls with it and kind of like swings it off. And she lands directly in front of you. She's pretty focused on you, so Rascal King will have a second to hit you, but she does hit you with her tail. Go ahead and take a powerful blow for me. Three. Great. Uh, you stand strong. Uh, you get a marked potential. And how do you weather the blow? How does it not hurt you? The tail kind of comes and whispers um, at you. So she's hitting me with her scorpion tail? Yep. Yeah, like knocking us out against the wall. Rascal King, it's your turn. What's happening? Yeah, so I see this, like, tail swing in like super fast and it's just being easily knocked to the side and i just kind of have a jaw drop moment then i turn look at squire and i go quick enact uh plan alpha one and squire <laughs> runs off to uh go pull the nearest fire alarm because that's kind of our go-to move <laughs> <laughs> i love it great squire's gonna go pull a fire alarm <laughs> and uh yeah at this point i'm just gonna run up and try to punch this uh this thing in the back of the head i, I imagine like i'm running along Top the like tops of the chairs, like yelling at people to to get out of the theater as I do, and then just take a flying leap. Punch in the back of the head? Are you like launching your body at her? Like where where are you in terms of like attacking the six foot tall woman? So I uh, take like a flying leap off of whatever chair edge is most appropriate, and I'm just like throwing my whole body into one punch. Great. Uh, she's distracted, so I'm gonna say you land that punch pretty solidly. Land it. And as you punch the back of her head, 
she kind of falls forward. Her head hits the screen and then her entire body just crumples into dust. Amber <clears throat> lets out a soft, like, cry. No, she was hot. I think uh, Max, like, not being ready for this to just thing to just disappear, probably stumbles on the landing and, like, kind of lands hard, but pulls himself into the three-point, like, hero landing for a second before he stands back up. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, you do get a little bit of applause from the people in the audience. At least two or three people think that this was part of the movie. And they're <laughs> like, shit, movies are getting really good nowadays. Like a couple teenagers who are probably a little bit more than a little bit more hot, more than a little bit high, are like, fuck yeah, all right. Uh, and they just kind of sit and yeah, with, with watch the, the screen. I'm going to kind of turn and look at Amber like, uh, Ethel's been gone for a while. You haven't yeah. noticed. <laughs> Uh, but also, Amber will put up her hand for a high five. That was a pretty sick move. Oh, I'm absolutely high fiving that. And I would be like, "Oh my god, the way you deflected that stinger, that was great." Oh okay. wait, wait. Uh, one of my team moves uh, when you share a triumphant celebration with someone, ask them if you have earned their respect. All right, oh, go ahead. Work yeah. Just been like, "Hey, how'd you like that?" That was that was amazing. That was absolutely amazing. Cool. Uh, if you have, take influence over them and mark potential. Great. And you already have influence over Rascal King, right? Yep, yep, I think so. So then you get to shift his labels now. So what that means is you mm. tell me like what trait you think he exemplifies. So dangerous or superior. And you'll shift that one up and one other one down. I'll shift up superior and I'll mark down danger. I will accept that. <laughs> you definitely like, need the superior. I mean, it does bring my danger to a negative two, but I can deal with that. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Just as this moment happens, the fire alarm goes off. Oh, um, real quick, I believe I also shared a triumphant celebration with someone. I believe I you did I already too. Told Go ahead. Them, I think I already told them how they're awesome, so I add a team to the pool. If they tell me how I'm awesome in return, we can add another team to the pool. Yeah, and Amber did say, like, that was a sweet punch. Okay, cool. The fire alarm goes off. And everyone starts reacting. The two teenagers in the front are still like, whoa. They're, they're blazed. So uh, yeah, you mentioned that Ethel wrong. wasn't here. Do you want to go check that out? Yes. I would like to uh, try <sighs> to, like, gently guide the two high teenagers to the exit with everybody else. The uh, the teenagers, they, they'll follow you. They're like, no, but the movie's just getting so good. They do leave with you all. And then they cool. see everyone like leaving the theater, and they're like, oh, shit, is that a real fire alarm? And they just like walk out really casually. Nice. Everyone else is at a kind of brisk jog, or a, a run, almost. Ethel, do you leave with the, the rest of your movie when the fire alarm goes off? Yeah, this movie is shit. <laughs> <laughs> It's not as hyped up as everyone made it out to be. But the egg in the face. Yeah, it's just a rehashing of the jokes from the first one. Yeah, the egg is, it's a classic. But uh, when you see her get pied immediately after, you're like, oh, this is just the same jokes from Mama's Basement 2. Yep. All right, so Ethel, you walk out into the hallway. Red is Rascal King and Makina walk out into the hallway. And uh, Squire comes bouncing back. And so the four of you are reunited. What do you all do? How was the other movie? That was good. The movies here are kind of crap, though. Back what on is- my planet, we <laughs> had good, good horror movies. Oh, God. Here we go again. Here we go again. <laughs> What's going on out in the, like, foyer? Are people still freaking out? Yeah, everyone is leaving. Everyone is leaving pretty quick. quickly. The manager is kind of, like, rolling his eyes because he assumes some, like, dumb kid pulled the fire alarm. And he's kind of, like, walking back. Incorrect. It was uh, some dumb kids wreck. That work for him. <laughs> <laughs> two employees, one of which is probably in your class, Amber and Max. In fact, uh, Claire is in your class. Uh, she's kind of a popular girl, but you know that she uh, works two different jobs. She's following the manager back in, along with someone you don't know. Uh, and they're going to go like look to check to see if there is actually a fire. So did that thing come to life? Or what? <laughs> Well, what happened? The really sexy, like, supervillain came out of the movie. 
in this general mayhem, can I slip up into like the projectionist booth of that movie? Yeah, absolutely. The projectionist booth, there's a very clearly marked door that says employees only right next to the snack bar. Do you want to go over to that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So you open the door, it's not locked. You go up and all the projection, like the projectionist rooms, they're all pretty much just open doors, uh, all in the same hallway. It's like a big open hallway with door, open window-ish things on either side. Standing in the middle of the hallway is a girl, probably about 5'4", a little bit chubby, um, with curly, curly dark hair. What's odd about her is that her eyes are glowing white, and it looks like they're projecting something. Like, it looks like her eyes are kind of like projection screens themselves. Ooh, nice. Uh, She turns and looks at you, and she opens her mouth to speak, and no words come out, but like a horror movie soundtrack does. Uh, Oh, okay. (laughs) Max, what do you do? Hey, I, I'm going to kind of just like take a couple steps back. Like, I think I may have taken a wrong turn. I'm going to lean down. I need help! Like down the, uh, the, I see the <laughs> stairs. Fantastic. Uh, what do we do, guys? I'm going to follow Rascal King. Your, your, your funeral. All right. Uh, Ethereal, what are you doing while they go upstairs? I'm going outside. What a party loser. <laughs> All right, after all, you can go ahead and head outside. We'll catch up with you in a second. Amber, you make it upstairs, and uh, Max is staring down this girl who's slowly walking down the hallway, and her mouth is still open, playing this horror movie theme song. Um, Away from me, right? Not towards me? No, she's absolutely walking towards you, and she's ah. walking slow. <laughs> it's almost like she's a horror movie character. And then uh, she's about three projection screens down from you, so probably still about like 60 feet away. She was pretty far. And she turns, and she looks uh, over across the projector, and then she looks back, and you hear the music in the room just swell. Uh, it's also the, a horror movie theme, but it's a different horror movie theme than the one she's currently speaking, singing. I'm not really sure how this works. <laughs> Vocalizing. Emitting. Um, emitting. That's a good word. And you hear this like horrible, horrible like cackle come from inside that theater. And then Oof. she uh, she looks at the two of you. Uh, Max, you've had a second to prepare. What are you going to do? Where's Squire at this point? Right by your feet. Okay. Oh, God. Poor Squire. I'm going to throw Squire at her face. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Uh, that sounds like directly engaging a threat. All, All right. right. So go ahead and mark potential. <laughs> That's what I'm really here for. <laughs> So you throw Squire at her, and though she's been moving really, really slowly, with inhuman speed, she like brings her hand up, catches him, and then flings him through one of the windows. Um, oh no! Into one of the other movie theaters, Mama's Basement Three, not into the one with the horror music coming out of it. Ethereal, while you're downstairs, we're gonna jump back to you for a second. Amber, I'll be back to you in a minute. Am I hearing any of this? No, you went outside, uh, but you're just kind of hanging out as uh, stuff is happening. You're going to glance back into the uh, the lobby, and you've seen the poster for um, I Will Eat Your Face. And the villain for that is this, like, supernatural clown-looking thing. Imagine the, like, scary form of it. Um, oh, shit. Squire hates clowns. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the only one I care about. And being um, hurled into things. Yeah. The clown is about seven and a half feet tall. Um, no thanks. With these really terrifying teeth and really long claws and red and yellow paint. A uh, very like, a very like, almost like Iron Man was a clown kind of colors. And that clown is standing in the middle of the lobby, cackling as it rushes towards the front door, towards the crowd. And, you know, I'm gonna let you think about what you're gonna do while we jump back to Amber. Amber, uh, what do you do? We've just seen Squire get flung into a window. I would like to assess the situation. Go nuts. You're going to roll plus superior. Which is zero for me. I got a 10. Great. That's a solid hit. Uh, you got to ask two questions. What here can I use to kill the power? Like, is there a breaker box? Uh, yeah, there's a breaker box behind her, like on the far wall behind her. Um, behind Amber or the creepy girl? Behind the creepy girl. Behind the movie girl. 
give it <laughs> you could probably get past her she doesn't like you could probably sneak past her if you got ran fast enough or if the two of you move together but there's also like you know the like thick like outside the wall wires that are like metal encased uh-huh um, there's a bunch of those running from it into the different theaters meaning there's one pretty close to you you could probably send an electrical charge from it and maybe short circuit the whole building okay cool i'm looking at the other questions and if you want to hold that for a second you can how could we best end this quickly you could probably she doesn't seem like she's superhuman like she doesn't seem like she's fast and there's this like weird thing happening with her eyes but Which she doesn't really seem good. like she's all that strong you could probably just knock her out okay um, she doesn't seem anything more than human okay amber's gonna make a mad rush past her to get to the breaker box to turn off all of the projectors all right uh let's call that i'm gonna say that's probably defending you're trying to turn off the projectors to like save people notably okay. probably squire i would assume yeah and i think kind of in general like everybody yeah uh so you're gonna roll plus savior on that okay <laughs> 10. damn Doing a lot better than uh, Rascal King of the day, apparently. <laughs> yeah. Great. Uh, so you can choose one. Add a team to the pool, take influence over someone you protect, or clear a condition. I'll add a team to the pool. Great. We're at five team now, y'all. Yeah. Uh, and you rush past. You do make it past her. And you make it to the breaker box. What does that look like? What does that panel look like when you get to the breaker box? So it's, it's one of those gray boxes in the wall. And you open it up, and there are switches two columns on each and so they've you, they don't have to be labeled but i'm guessing this theater has labeled them with like which which like projector rooms are in each one um yep. and the, the top uh seven rows on each column are all projector screens yeah and then there's there's some for like the lobby and like other 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 places in the building yep absolutely so amber is gonna initially only turn off only the projectors or just like the the projector rooms in general excellent um the projector screens turn off and uh let's go to ethereal oh uh, let's go to max now max amber has just shut off all the projector screens and the the girl is not really sure who she wants to go after she's kind of looking back and forth and her glowing eyes are looking back and forth between the two of you i should um, what do you want to do a powerful blow when rascal or sorry when squire gets hurt i'm supposed to take a powerful blow Oh, great. Uh, then, yeah, take a powerful blow from that. I don't want to, but, you know. Thank you. I didn't know that. I appreciate that. Don't worry. This is the one time I'll roll amazing. That's <laughs> 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 definitely your best roll. All right. So you choose one. In seeing Squire go flying through the window, I'm just going to, ignoring everything else, run to the window to, like, stare down at Squire to make sure he's okay which I think is uh, giving an opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. So just as Squire gets knocked out the window, Amber rushes past you, and the movie girl's kind of looking back and forth as you run to the window too. She's going to come up from behind you and uh, grab you by your hair and then throw you back into the hallway. Uh, as you get there, you make it to the window just as the thing turns off, and what you see right before the thing turns off is like one frame you see is uh, Mama, who's the main character of this, standing with like her hands on her hips and her shirt is just soaked with blood. Ooh. There's Ooh. no context. That's just the only thing you get. And uh, this freaker All right. Um, but you do see before you get pulled back that Squire is like up and Squire gives you like a really weak thumbs up. Um, okay. He's not doing great, but he's there. And she pulls you back into the hallway and you fall onto your back. She stands over you and her eyes start glowing these fierce, fierce white staring into your eyes. And before we get to that, uh, Ethereal. So this clown is racing towards the doors that you're all in outside. Oh, okay. uh, what do you do? I am going to use my density control to make the structure denser. Great. It's a glass door, but I think that's well within your powers. I don't think you need to um, roll for anything. So the, um, the creature is running, and this is a tall creature, this clown. And it runs, and it crashes into the doors. And the doors crack, but uh -huh. they don't go through like it doesn't crash through yeah it kind of um, just like jackasses his head against the wall and then bounces back yeah it kind of stays on there and like slides down the wall very like almost looney tune style nice. and it leaves a smear of like clown makeup on the wall as it <laughs> slides down the wall 
There's red on it. You can't tell if the red is blood or clown makeup, but we just are going to pretend that it's clown makeup. I just I just imagine Beetlejuice smashing his head into a glass wall and sliding down now. <laughs> very, very similar. All right. Uh, the people see this giant clown and start screaming around you. And they start taking yeah, that makeup in every general direction. What do you do? I'm guessing I'm going to fart ecstasy again <laughs> because they, I do not like listening to all this screaming. Uh, cool. Let's go ahead and uh, call that a unleashing your powers. I got a 10 again. You spray your pheromones all over the crowd, and they all like get that like dopey grin on their face again. And they... Uh, oh, it's a good time when Ethel's in the room. <laughs> they like turn and start like pointing and laughing at the clown, who looks a little more hurt than you would think a horror movie character should. Like, almost a little flustered by this. And then the clown opens the door and steps outside. Moon Harbor Heroes is produced by Anthony Sheets and T.P. Hugh and edited by Anthony Sheets. Anthony can be found on Twitter at IcyNewYear or at IcyNewYear.com. T is the host of Incubator on Air, a new play podcast available on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, and Google Play. They can be found at Playwright on Twitter or thuth94 on Instagram. Cataclysm Crew is GM'd by T.P. Huth. Rascal King is played by me, Anthony Sheets. Machina is played by Elliot Peterson. She can be found at Elliot Yulin on Instagram. Ethel Moon is played by Zweifang. Our logo was designed by Beautiful Beasties. She can be found on Instagram at beastly.doodles or at patreon.com slash beautifulbeasties. The music of this issue is Mistake the Getaway by Kevin McLeod. A link to his website and the license will be in the show notes. If you want to get a hold of us, email us at moonharborheroes at gmail.com or find us on Twitter at moonharborcast. We're also on Instagram at moonharborheroes. If you enjoyed this issue, please leave us a review on iTunes and tell a friend. Word of mouth and five-star reviews are really the best way for us to keep bringing these stories to more people. And uh, thanks for helping us save the world. We'll see you next issue.